Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in to another ACE Talk. And welcome, no matter from where in the world you are. Uh, today, we have Jiri, who's a data scientist uh, with a master's degree in applied economics. He's going to be talking about machine learning in behavioral economics. He has experience in startups, and his interests are recommender systems and behavioral economics. So I'll pass the floor on to Jiri. OK. Uh, thank you, Susan. So hello, everyone. My name is Jiri, and today I will be talking about this topic, which uh, is quite new because it's about behavioral economics incorporated in machine learning. And the primary question I, uh, I want to ask, I want to answer this overview is whether uh, such combination is even possible. So something just about me, uh, Susan already introduced me. I've been an ACE uh, active member from uh, 2019. Uh, actually, I also completed uh, business administration be uh, before my degree in applied economics. And uh, you can connect uh, with me on LinkedIn or uh, go to my personal website and uh, read uh, some of the articles I, I have written. So today's agenda is uh, very simple. So first of all, I will tell you something about behavioral economics foundations. And I must say there uh, are a lot of uh, theories and uh, models in this uh, in this field. So instead of some exhaustive uh, overview, I put this presentation in the setting of gambles. And uh, on top of that, I will uh, introduce you uh, behavior in uh, economics and machine learning in two exemplary, exemplary works. So primary question. What is actually behavioral economics? Uh, it's mostly about economics. Uh, and in economics, there is a theory that's called rational choice theory. And, but there is a problem because this, uh, according to this theory, when uh, humans are presented with various options in the settings of uncertainty, the theory states that they would choose the option that maximizes their, their individual satisfactions. So, it assumes that people, given their preferences and constraints, are capable of making rational decisions, which we know it's, uh, it's not true. So there comes behavioral economics. They want to bring theories based on evidence from experiments. And for example, the, uh, one of the most famous uh, theory is a prospect theory, which was introduced uh, by Daniel Kahneman and his co colleague Amos Tversky. I'm quite sure you uh, heard about the guys. Daniel Kahneman received a Nobel Prize in 2002 for his work. And uh, particularly, mm, they were quite, or he was quite successful for his dual system theory, uh, where he introduced how mm, fast system one versus slow system two. These are two systems according, uh, to, uh, according which humans make decisions. I want to introduce uh, just a very specific example about uh, about that uh, that thing. So, and actually, this is uh, I actually took this picture in a grocery convenience store in Prague, and it, rep it quite well represents uh, these two theories uh, these two theories in practice. So, imagine that uh, you want to buy peers, peas. And uh, you are exposed to cho two choices. You can buy peas for uh, equivalent of three uh, dollars per one kilo, or you can buy uh, peas for equivalent of six, uh, 50 cents per 100 grams. So let, let's let's assume that you want to, you know, let's assume these uh, peas are more or less the same and you want to buy the cheapest ones. So uh, your system one, usually would compare the, how the how these numbers uh, the magnitude of these two numbers and you would assume that uh, peas uh, in choice a in choice a are more, uh, much more expensive uh, however there is another you know there is another hidden uh, thing uh, and i think uh, this is what the owners of the shop uh, just uh, they just made a mistake because uh, when when you look at the picture uh, there is this price for peas uh, for B, they uh, it's in decigrams, right? 
So then, according if it was if it was decigrams, it would one kilo of peas would cost almost ten thousand or, or um, uh, five hundred uh, bucks, which is too much, right? So probably uh, it was a decagram, which still uh, would uh, put these peas uh, to more expensive uh, choice, which would be uh, which would be a choice uh, cho choice B, and these peas would uh, cost five bucks. Uh, so the thing is with this dual system theory that uh, humans first uh, first system uh, come in play and it can make very fast decisions which can be very biased and the system two is more rational but also it requires more more effort so this was something just uh, from the from the field you can you can actually watch uh, you can actually observe these uh, this around i literally spent one hour in that shop and uh where i was watching how people were buying these more expensive piece thinking probably they were the cheapest ones <laughs> anyway uh and getting back to the question uh is this even possible the thing is that as you will see that both social scientists and data scientists underestimate the extent to which such learning is possible uh Speaking about data scientists, they uh, usually work, uh, work with large data volumes and uh, social scientists, on the other hand, uh, have uh, explanatory, uh, have uh, laboratory experiments and they are concerned about explaining behavior or over quantitative predictions. So I think it's not possible. This is, this is not possible. <laughs> Which you know, I'm, I'm I'm just teasing you. It's definitely possible. I will uh, discuss the two, uh, the two work uh, very shortly. Just uh, I want to um, give you some overview of the theory that uh, actually led uh, to facilitating machine learning in behavior economics. So uh, I mentioned rational choice theory, uh, which uh, turned out to be uh, wrong in history. And that's uh, that's why uh, Daniel Kahneman and Persky came with prospect theory, trying to mitigate uh, its limitations. There is still active research in this field, and many descendant and deviation theories. On the other hand, uh, there is an absence of accurate and robust uh, coherent models in this uh, cognitive field. So there, mm, there, there are some choice prediction competitions that try to mitigate these limitations to, uh, they engage researchers to come up with more robust and more generalizable models so the two two examples i will be talking about uh, are just build a bridge between social science and machine learning the first uh, work uh, psychological forest uh, incorporates uh, one of the most uh, known theory for uh, and uh, based on it uh, in the authors engineer psychology psychology uh, psychology i'm sorry psychological features fed into the model but on uh, but on top of that uh, the second work the cognitive model priors actually elaborates on that work and they internalize the weights from this cognitive model into the model so something about the setting of these works so the the challenge the task was actually to uh use this data from one of one of that competition and calculate the mean aggregate choice rate for two gambles alternatives over time so imagine a, a scenario when a human faces uh two options option for a gamble a and option b and, and, and option b for another gamble uh, and previous uh, previous work uh, used to ver used to um, consider this from the perspective uh, pro from the perspective of prospect theory and other uh, social science based uh, theories and models uh, from which best estimating sampling tools uh, model was uh, probably the best one. I don't worry, I will be talking about the model soon. And this uh, this data set, the work. Uh, uh, the, the two research uh, works used, uh, they, are, they are collected uh, human choices uh, in CPC competition 15, where a set where um, a gamble is a specified as a set of 
and possible out outcomes uh, with x, y, uh, with their probabilities, p, y. Uh, I told you about the prospect, uh, the rational choice theory, uh, which uh, utilizes uh, expected utility, which is the foundation of the economics. Uh, mm, but it, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, humans are biased machines. Uh, they uh, bait much more. Uh, they, they be much more factors that only their uh, expected utility. So that's why uh, you can see the maximized utility function here in the first uh, in the first equation, and that's why Daniel Kahneman came with the prospect theory, which is a weighted function that non-linear non non accounts uh, for uh, for. Uh, the nonlinear transforms the outcome probabilities. Specifically, uh, here uh, the pi function is a, a weighting function that transforms the probabilities, while uh, this v function is a subjective assessment that can be influenced by other factors, such as whether the outcome is perceived as a gain or a loss. However, still there was missing any. Mm, there was any single unified model was not found. That's why uh, the beast came uh, came in hand. Again, I will introduce you the beast in the very next slide. And this slide is just showing you the workflow, how uh, psychologic, psychologic, psychological, psychological uh, thinking or theories get into machine learning. And uh, because in the first step here, uh, the researchers were actually able to use these past theories uh, and incorporate BEAST uh, into the model. Either it was a model-to-model -model feature decomposition or they incorporated in the model's architecture. So one of the most successful and recent attempts to create a single and unified model uh, that would incorporate human deviations from the expected utility theory is the best estimate and sampling tools beast and uh it incorporate these on the left side you can you can see the assumptions this model is built on and uh you can see that uh it it is uh it's concerned more than just the expected utility and according to this this model, uh, imagine a gamble with two choices. And according to this model, uh, a gamble A will be strictly preferred to gamble B if and only if uh, this equation holds, where uh, the first term is the advantage of a gamble A over gamble B based on their expected uh, values. And the second term is the advantage uh, based on the sampling technique. Oh, sorry. Uh, and, the er e, uh, and the last term er is just a st standard error. Uh, just uh, a quick question sure. from the previous two slides. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess for those who aren't as familiar, could you give a real quick overview of uh, just what utility means? Okay, so utility means, in, uh, imagine, uh, I think, imagine, this would be a best example, imagine a restaurant, uh, all you can eat restaurant. So you pay 30, 30 bucks for, and you can eat every, everything. So, and uh, ut uh, utility is your well-being. And imagine you came to that restaurant and you were very hungry. So we, with each portion of food, you are becoming less hungry. But each portion also gives you a little more satisfaction. So imagine you, you already ate two meals. It fulfills your uh, hungerness. And uh, with each additional, even a small piece of, uh, of meat, you are getting less of, your, of the well-being to the point that it actually uh, can uh, get you struggling. You can actually, you know, uh, vomit if you eat too much. Uh, is that is that a good explanation? 
Because I guess like utility is like you said, um, it's a kind of measure of well-being. And usually it's something that in an economics problem, like we want to maximize utility. Yeah. Right? But there are certain rules or laws of utility, such as um, a reduced uh, marginal benefit, right? Like as you yes. keep increasing it, there are some rules um, in terms of like a mathematical function where uh, there is reduced uh, uh, marginal benefits. Yeah, so yeah. I guess in, just to go to the next, I think, next, yeah, so in no. this slide, yeah, sorry. Um, in Beast, um, it, does it have nothing to do exactly with maximizing utility, but rather more to do with the number D minimization of the regret? Like utility is simply a function in here, right? Yeah. Not something part of yes. the problem. Um, so, so here, uh, for example, imagine, yeah, so, uh, according to this theory, there is uh, ex there is some uh, there is also expected benefit, right? Which you can you if you if you are gambling, you want to win the most, right? But at the same time, you want to minimize the regret. For example, if you, if a gamble uh, contains also also a punish punishment, you can not only lose or gain nothing, but you can uh, you can not only win or get nothing, but you can only get nothing or you know mm, be hurt if if that's uh if it's uh, the answer to your question okay yeah i think just to follow up um one one last point on this is that um the beast mecha mechanism is not so concerned about like let's say what the utility function is but rather assume no. that it's given or yes. you know exists yes. somehow yeah yes, so that, that's that's true Okay, gotcha. So, so Beast kind of assumes that there is a sort of utility function, which is kind of like a function that measures the quality of this gamble. That's that's yeah, exactly so that's, that's, that's true. Gotcha. Thanks. That answers the question, I think. Okay. So, and here I just wanted to show you uh, how this uh, expected or rational choice theory expected utility fails because. This is a specific example researchers, uh, researchers were asking people and uh, given these two choices, if you actually calculate the expected value of these two choices, the both of them are zero, right? So in, according to the, uh, to the theory, individuals should be indifferent. But the, fa the fact is uh, that most of the population uh, or most of the people in the pool would actually choose uh, B over A, and it's because uh, A in in probably it's probably uh, because uh, choice A it introduces it introduces some loss to you, right? So in B you win nothing, but actually you don't lose one hundred. There is no there is no option of losing one hundred. In option A there is. Uh, there is an option of losing 100 and people people hate losing. This is like being hurt. So talking about the data the researchers use, uh, use for this uh, experiment. So there were uh, 150 different choice problems and uh, they explicitly designed to elicit deviation from the expected uh, utility. And uh, the thing is uh, they ask people First choices in this uh, in this setting about, uh, was with no feedback from the from the computer, and but uh, the rest of the choices actually uh, expose the payoff to uh, to people, which uh, which means some ambiguity, uh, because imagine a scenario uh, when uh, you are playing a game and for a certain time you are having no feedback, and then you are getting some feedback. It it makes you a little bit imbalanced about your about your choices, right? So, and also this is development. And since these were uh, first 25 choices, there is some development over time. This is how uh, the data set was made. So you can see uh, you can see the um, the choice uh, the the, uh, the options the participants were exposed to, and uh, how uh, how um, the, and the feedback they would receive. So uh, here I'm mm, running uh, out of the time. So I'm getting to the first work when the authors uh, 
use the bees for feature engineering. They uh, use shell machine learning, uh, even with some uh, uh, neural network, but uh, uh, they random forest uh, perform the best. And their main challenge was uh, to um, was uh, to find uh, the psychological theory that would be the best generalizable in machine machine learning. And uh, they decided to um, go to apply strategy of feature engineering. And uh, they actually they there are two three categories like uh, objective uh, objective uh, features which were like the, the, uh, no no theory based uh, no theory based features uh, directly obtained from the data but most importantly and the psychological psychology psychological feature from the beast uh, were uh, computed by the researchers or this engineered uh, for for the model so th there are 13 of them uh, most of them somehow uh, accounted expected value. Uh, I, to I told you about the ambiguity of being exposed or not being exposed to the payoff. Uh, they, uh, they did that here as well. And they received uh, interesting results because uh, when they no model would actually overperform the winner, uh, which was a uh, which was a very Uh, what they found out was actually that uh, the psychological uh, forest uh, achieved uh, with uh, those psychological features achieved 39 uh, percent improvement over any uh, machine learning model out of the shelf they tried but even though they uh, incorporated all these features with psychological one naive ones and so on uh, the statistical imp uh, the improvement of the model over beast or uh, cognitive science the cognitive science uh, model was not significant, was not statistically signi uh, significantly improved. Imp didn't uh, statistically statistically uh, improve the uh, the performance enough. So the next uh, the next paper I want just re really briefly go through is the cognitive model prior for predicting human decisions, and uh, this actually paper will be uh, present. Uh, presented by the uh, by the author uh, on 23rd uh, July, and here uh, again this, this is the same data set, uh, uh, but here the authors actually use the neural network, uh, and the most important thing uh, is that they actually didn't uh, use any feature engineering. They designed the model in a way that it could operate on a raw uh, on a on raw data. So. Uh, what they what they did uh, they realized that uh, they were realizing that uh, the limitation of behavioral economies in machine learning is mostly data scarcity. So they came up with a uh, synthetic tool data set designed from the CPC uh, 15 and CPC uh, 18, and uh, they actually uh, came up with assumption that any given cognitive model. Uh, as a function, as a as a function, can be actually uh, can be actually um, estimated by a machine learning model, and uh, they evaluate a large gap of inputs, uh, including those without accompanying human targets, to generate input target pairs uh, here uh, in this in this in this line, which uh, they would uh, train a machine learning uh, model to approximate it on. And and finally, they fine tuned uh, the resulting model on a small and real human data set uh, with uh, features X and human target uh, labels H or feature, human target features H. So this uh, this model uh, at the high level uh, consists of generating a synthetic data set generated from cognitive models that can be used to establish informative priors for machine learning algorithms. They overcame, uh, or to overcome data scarcity, they introduce an inductive bias, which uh, is they transfer the beast into a model's internalized weights. And they used a uh, dropout and fine tune the, the final model on a small uh, data set 
uh, this model is uh, very simple, but uh, or this the the model like in terms of architecture is simple, but uh, they also use set algo, which is a uh, which is a uh, random sparse graph uh, where they for each uh, sparse connected layer uh, at each of the training epoch the weights close uh cl the weights a fraction of weights closest to zero were uh removed and replaced with random new features the authors didn't consider this uh as a uh, necessary or significant uh addition to the model but i found it very sig uh, but i found it very uh very interesting so in the end, uh, this this model operated really on just the raw features, and it achieved the best best performance in the both dataset CPC fifteen and CPC eighteen. Uh, what uh, it uh, the it uh, the mean square error uh, decreased by twenty five percent over the beast uh, model, uh, which uh, which was used in the dataset as the baseline, but also it still improved the performance by 13% in psychological forest or the winner of the of the competition so in summary uh, these two works uh, they uh, use uh, oh I, I see instead of beast I use Bert there <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry but so these these two work uh, used a cognitive science model from psychological beast uh, psychological forest uh, use the model to decompose psychological features and shallow machine learning to uh, to um, try to uh, overperform the winner in the competition and the and the performance improvement were not statistically significant and without incorporating these psychological features the machine learning would completely fail on the other hand uh, the, in cognitive model priors uh, the authors use a neural network with also a graph uh, net, which achieves state-of-the-art uh, performance because they were able to internalize uh, the weights. So just to wrap it up, uh, wrap it up, uh, just stay tuned for this stream uh, on July 23rd. The last uh, paper I discussed, uh, the the author is uh, coming and will be presenting uh, presenting the work from. Uh, even from a uh, more detailed perspective. And on June 30th, uh, there is another uh, interesting paper which use, uh, we, uh, in which uh, the authors you, uh, use uh, reinforcement learning to um, explain how a human uh, behaves in a casino. So this is uh, all from me. Thank you. That's, uh, thank you so much, Jiri. Um, there are, I guess, there are some questions. Sure. Uh, and I guess, first of all, just to sum up, like you would say that uh, the first paper you covered is um, related to feature engineering. And then the second one is kind of how they could combine beast into the weights for the neural network and avoid exactly. feature mm -hmm. engineering. Gotcha. Exactly. Okay, that's that's awesome. Um, I'm just taking a look at the mm -hmm. questions. Um, okay, so regarding the um, experiment with the, I guess, CPC 15 mm -hmm. data, right? It seems that uh, one of the conclusions is that people simply are not good at calculating expected utility, or that's not a natural behavior in their mind. Uh, it it may be like uh, it may be to do that, but there are another factors uh, because uh, even if you have a large expected utility, you still uh, don't may or may prefer not to be exposed to a chance to even uh, to even uh, be punished for wrong choice like. Even you, you're in A, your uh, expected utility can be higher than B. But if it goes wrong, you uh, there is there may be even a chance that you would pay something, and that's what people may want to avoid, if, even if their expected utility is, is high. Just this. 
I see. Um, I have kind Don't of listen. two questions about that just to clarify. So mm -hmm. um, you mentioned, like, I guess people want to avoid uncertainty, right? That's one of the things I'm getting from what you said. Yeah, some some people like no, not in general. You, you know, they, there are people uh, who are risk averse or and who uh -huh. and who are risk seeking. Right. So is this um, like what you mentioned? Like people. Um, okay, I, I forgot what exactly what it was to clarify. Like the expected utility value. Could, let's say it's higher for one choice, and then. Um, because this is constructed of like the probability, mm. right? Let's say a 90% yeah. probability of getting mm. like a high, mm. a low reward and a 10% probability yeah. of getting like an extremely high reward. So what is yes. causing people to not prefer one over mm -hmm. the other? So there, there are, uh, yeah, there are actually, look, look at this, look at this slide. Uh, as I said, uh, you can see that the expected utility for, uh, or expected value for, for the both options are the same they are zero right so according to the and actually this is old theory from 40s i guess according to this theory uh people should be uh indifferent because the expected value is the same but uh from the experiments or what, what the researchers uh saw in data is that the uh people would actually, or the vast majority, imagine like 80% of people, for example, would prefer choice B. So, and this means that the utility theory uh, doesn't work because utility theory doesn't uh, account for the option of losing something. Being, because uh, here uh, in A, it means that, yeah, the expected utility or expected value is zero, but still you can, there is a 50% chance of losing 100, while in B, there is no chance of losing. So risk averse people would go for B. I see. So it could be, you know, people could be risk averse or risk loving. Um, but the main thing is that I guess the idea of risk of, um, no, 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 like loss aversion, right? Like you'd rather not lose $5 over gaining $10. Like yes, yes, that, that, that's okay. it. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. That, that clarifies uh, that question. Thanks a lot. That was a very uh, clear explanation. Um, so one other question was, um, so you, you did mention like, uh, some of these approaches, I forgot it was like the first paper specifically or both, um, right. Targeting the deficiency of, let's say expected utility, which this one does and prospect theory. Like, uh, could you elaborate on how the, um, pros uh, prospect theory deficiencies, uh, I know you didn't go into it fully into this, in this mm -hmm. paper, but how, what are some deficiencies, um, that these approaches could help with in prospect theory? So, uh, deficiencies in prospect theory. So, mm, so since the researchers realized that the expected utility, according to which uh, humans should maximize their well-being, doesn't very hold, uh, Kahneman and Tversky they came with a model that uh, asserts that, that or that mm, asserts that people assess a quality that takes a similar form to expected utility but there is there needs to be some function that weighting function that would non-linearly transforms the outcome uh, probabilities uh, but uh, uh, it depends what, what was the what, what was the second part of the question i think i i lost it oh yeah but, so i guess just the, mm -hmm. how how prospect um how the deficiencies of prospect theory could be approached with um the methods that you mentioned because like oh, what, mm -hmm. what you mentioned was that it addressed um i guess expected utility and then i guess just to elaborate a little bit more on if that mm -hmm. approach could be used on prospect theory as well yeah i, I don't know if i uh, can answer that question because i see that the, still you know the um, the thing about prospect theory is that there are a lot of uh, variations and descendants but no not single unified uh, version uh, which would be generalizable, uh, unlike a beast, because a beast can be highly, highly generalizable, uh, because it accounts for 
uh, it comes with all assumptions uh, about, or a lot of assumptions, uh, actually these six assumptions on the left, uh, according to uh, individual, individuals make uh, decisions based on. So it incorporates uh, pessimism, uh, also sensitive, for example, sensitivity to the expected value as uh, as the expect as the um, as utility theory and uh, and uh, prospect theory do it as well, and, but also it uh, incorporates uh, and maximize uh, humans' uh, desire to maximize probability of gaining, but simultaneously human uh, desire to minimizing the probability of losing. But I'm not sure if it answers the question very well, uh, be uh, because like I, I see the uh, the beast is like the uh, descendant, like or the next generation of uh, of the of the pro uh, prospect theory. Gotcha, gotcha. Thanks um, for that clarification. Uh, just one more quick quick question about the discussion we had again about the, I guess, loss aversion. So they mm -hmm. they want to understand like if they put it as in people dislike losing more than not gaining. Like, is that a fair kind of summarization of that finding? Uh, one, one, once again, if if I can summarize it. Uh, like people, mm -hmm. the, they they found that people's behavior is that people dislike losing more than not gaining. Yes. Uh, so actually, uh, regarding the first work, I have a supporting slide over somewhere here. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I have some supporting slides. Give me, yeah. Hmm. I think it was here. Uh, yeah. This is this is the first uh, this is the first uh, work when they the researchers uh, did the exhaustive uh, feature engineering and uh, they kind of compared the machine learning model with uh, with the simple beast and uh, these and because you know they uh, in the machine learning model they try to uh examine the features like the standard procedure uh shuffling features re removing and so on measuring the, uh, the impact with that particular feature and so on and they found out that actually these two theories uh actually come in hand they are both uh, they are both they explain both the same that uh, actually decision makers assume to select the prospect with the highest weighted value and its probability of a better payoff that's that's the most important uh, thing uh, that uh, could explain the behavior according to this uh, according to this work. Gotcha. Thanks. Um, so I did get another question. Uh, can you elaborate on the advantage of alternative sampling in the equation? Uh, choose a gamble if advantage of gamble a larger advantage of alternative sampling. So I think that's the slide. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, so I yeah. think specifically mm -hmm. the advantage of alternative sampling part. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so these, uh, okay, so actually these advantages come, I, I, I'm not quite sure about it, but uh, I was looking at it and they come from uh, the, uh, from the actually um, assumptions on the, on the, on the left where the ten, you know uh, it is it, you need to take one particle assumptions to come up with that sampling according to which you uh, calculate uh, the uh, advantage this uh, like because I, uh, I i'm not quite sure about it and uh, we can ask the, uh, the author of the second paper uh, to elaborate on more but i i think this is this, this is the thing Okay, gotcha. But, thanks. Yeah, um, you were saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm just you know to summarize it. I I uh, I think the uh, the sampling tools are the assumptions uh, on the left. Gotcha. Okay, so I guess we might have the chance to ask the authors of. Definitely. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, the person who asked is Charles. So hopefully we can also clarify. Um, it then. So I think that's um, it for the questions. And thank you so much, Jiri, for the talk today.
Um, as someone who also had a economic economics background, I'm really excited to have you know hosted this talk. And for those who are online, thank you for joining. And you know, uh, if you want to get notifications of upcoming talks, we do like three to five of these, and you can like them or subscribe and get the notification as well. So thank you, and have a good uh, night, morning, or evening, everyone. Bye. Thank you too. Goodbye.